exclusive on Pod Hub Network. Your city, your podcast. To the delight of this crowd, McClendon marches down the dugout steps with first base. McCutcheon's throw. The runner breaks to the plate. Here's the throw. Wow. He is out. The buck goes with it. That ball's in well to left center field. Back toward the track. You are listening to the North Shore 9 Podcast. Follow them on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Also, make sure to watch NS9 Live every Thursday on Twitch and help support by becoming a patron. Let's go Bucks! Yo, 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 yo. Welcome to Starbucks. I'm your host, Anthony DiNardo. With me, as always, my co-host, Jim Rosati. Jim, what's up, baby? What's going on? Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Doing well. How about you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. You know, I uh, I was good this morning. I had everything set up, and I just muted myself as I was talking, but quickly unmuted myself. So, I mean, it couldn't be a North Shore 9 show if there wasn't some mute issue happening, but uh, it was a quick fix. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you were if you were muted or not, so glad to... <laughs> Glad to hear you're all right. <laughs> Glad to know. Yes, I'm doing very well right now. Um, but you know who else is doing really well right now? Who else is doing really well? Your 2022 Pittsburgh Pirates. Beating up on all those poverty mm-hmm. franchises. They, uh, they, they own the NL West, it seems like. They do. They do. Even though they're below 500, they sit at the top of the standings. It goes the Pirates, then the Dodgers, then everyone else. Doesn't matter. That's how it works. That's how it works. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> I, don't, I don't make the rules. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I gotta say, you know, uh, we talked with Tyler. Now, obviously, you weren't on the show because you don't apparently do anything on Thursday nights with us anymore. Right. But you know, like we talked and discussed how, you know, we can like probably have a pretty positive show and talk about some good things you know not like force it and then i know we went a little off the rails there a bit and you had some things you want to bring up which we won't go there yet at least but like i feel like today's show it's it's quite the same thing if not even more i mean after this past week facing the dodgers first off sweeping the dodgers then taking two out three from the diamondbacks Mm -hmm. it's a pretty pretty fun week and like let's also talk about the fact that it wasn't done by all these terrible vets that were brought in to just place, you know, placehold and such. Like the young bucks are coming up. They're not all here yet. Not all of them, Jim. But the young bucks are coming up and they're producing wins. Yeah, I think that's the that's the part to be excited about right there. <clears throat> is that you know Rowan Z Contreras was a part of this pitching wise. Um Cal Mitchell was a part of this. Jack Sulinski was a part of this. Diego Castillo has been a part of this. So, like, it, it's not just the uh, the veterans anymore, especially now in that outfield. You know, they're going to have a – they're going to have an issue now in that outfield with too many when they have to try to figure out playing time for some people. But, yeah, I think this it's been a fun team to watch over the last week. And, and really – this is what we've been asking for this whole time, right? Is, hey, let's stop playing these people who have no, why are they even here, right? And let's play some of these young guys that are basically ready for the major leagues. They're just being blocked by veterans for some reason. And uh, what happens? The veterans get hurt and the young guys all come up and we're, we're seeing like – we're seeing some bad performances, right? Like Rodolfo Castro really hasn't looked great in his, in his stint, but sure. we're seeing, we're seeing, we're seeing other people step up um, with timely hits and, and good defense and good base running. Um, yeah. So it's been, it's been more fun to watch games lately because of the players that are on the field. And like, that's literally it. Obviously injuries and such as like cause a lot of it to happen and some players to come up. But I mean, again, like even like, to Peter Marcano, you know, I don't think you or I were too excited about him. He comes up in a big way. 
uh, you know, Cal Mitchell comes up. Like you're saying too, this outfield, which we talked about this off season, which is just kind of pathetic. Like, there's not a whole lot of depth as far as the outfield goes. Like obviously there's Brian Reynolds. And there's Brian Reynolds. <laughs> No, but like we said, like there's clearly no stars. I mean, there's a ton of depth. There's like a lot of guys, right? But that was really it. And we know Swaggerty was involved, you know, in those guys. And I pretty much, you know, my, my feeling was if you get anything out of him, it's a bonus. Like I just feel like you have to go forward in this organization, more or less writing him off. Like, you know what? I mean, the, the production, like I never really, I'm not going to say never, but especially the past few years, I've kind of soured on him as a prospect. And then that injury, like that type of injury happened to him. And I just felt like, you know, going into this year, you just had a more or less figure. You you can't bank on anything from him. If he gives you anything, it's a bonus. You know what I mean? Like you have to prepare for this rebuild as if you're not going to get Swaggerty as a major league player. Now he's tearing it up. Now, obviously he didn't play yesterday, but he also has gotten the call now. Like you said, like you got Cal Mitchell, Sawinski, you know, Swaggerty, obviously Gamble's playing great, you know, when he comes back and, and Reynolds. And it's just like, what happened that this team has all kinds of, like, we have issues. Who's going to play in the outfield? There's too many yeah. guys. Yeah, you're essentially, you're going to have to give Reynolds, Mitchell, Sawinski, and Swaggerty now those four. There's three spots for those four. So. I would imagine, I mean, the way that they've kind of been doing lineups anyways, with giving people days off here and there, it, all of them will receive ample playing time, right? Right. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I wouldn't I wouldn't have expected them to have Mitchell, Swinsky, and Swaggerty all up at one time. That's a very good are. point. Yeah. I mean, first off, Kyle Mitchell was left off the 40, man. You know, and mm-hmm. I mean, that alone tells you where the organization felt on him. Now, he's had productive years in the minors, right? I mean, it's not as if I thought he would be trash and never see the makers leagues and such, but, I mean, he was left off the 40, man. Anthony Alford was on the 40, man. Cal Mitchell wasn't. That spoke volumes to me. So it's like, okay, I mean, they don't see, you know, Cal Mitchell too highly. He's raked in Indy, uh, you know, with with Swaggerty. I mean, hell, again, because of that injury we're talking about, like, I felt like I didn't expect to see him this early. I mean, I assumed he would struggle. Then it's going to take some time. I mean, he did struggle out the gates, and then it was like, snap. And that wasn't even like just a decent player. He was like an outstanding player in AAA. I mean, he's never performed this level, I would say, in this long of a stretch anywhere. I could be wrong, right. but that's just my top of my head how I feel about it. Um, and then, yeah, like Jack Sawinski, again, like never even saw AAA. He was a debate. You know, do you put Swinsky on or Cal Mitchell on the forty man? So like he was also on that border, on that cusp, and you know he was here quickly. So yeah, like all three of them are at the same time right now, and we can't speak to Swagger yet because he hasn't done anything. But I mean, they're between Mitchell and Swinsky, especially Swinsky right now, performing at the major league level. You're going to give them time. Yeah, what a week for Sawinski. Um, he, I mean, he's played really well. He is now, he, he, we talked about it before, right? Where the numbers weren't backing up how he looked. Yes. Right. And it was, it was one of those things where like he looks comfortable. He looks comfortable. He looks like he belongs. The numbers just aren't there. Now the numbers are pretty much there. Like he's now, he is now a, an average to an above average hitting. Um, major league baseball player. Uh, and that has really come to fruition just in this last week or so. He's really upped his numbers quite a bit. He leads all NL rookies in home runs with six. Like he's got legit power. Yesterday, two more doubles. Mm-hmm. Um, his one his one double off of the wall, I think would have been a home run in like 26 parks, you know, but PNC held it in. So it was one of those type of deals. The guy, he's, he's, he's playing good defense. I actually, when they, when they batted him third the other day, I was like, I, I like it. I was, I was like, he doesn't need to be batting seventh, eighth and ninth anymore. Uh, move him up in the order because he's one of the only people in this lineup who's a power threat at this point. He's consistently putting together good at bats. Uh, you saw the, the home run he hit off of uh, the home run he hit the other night 
was like a nine pitch at bat. Right? Yeah. So it's just against, it wasn't against, who was it against? Um, who was it against? Uh, Mark Melanson. Right? Was so, that the Melanson one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was the Melanson one. That was the walk off. Um, oh, so right. it's like, yeah, it's not like he's like hitting these off of bums. Like he, he put together a really strong quality at bat against, you know, a, a guy who's been in the all star game multiple times uh, and, and ended up winning that battle. So, Really happy with what I've seen as Sawinski. I still, I, I'm not sure, quite sure, like where he, where he fits in in the long term. Like, but he more and more, he's at least looking like someone who can be a contributor on, on a good major league team. So, um, I want to see more. I, I, he already is a contributor on a good major yeah, league team, Jim. Right? What are you talking about? But let's, let's keep seeing. Him. Let's keep seeing. Him. That's like literally where I am. Like, as the more you see him, the more optimistic I get. You know, again, like, I, I, it, it was all about small wins this year. And just the fact that he came up from double A and looked comfortable in the majors, right? Like, no pitcher has made him really look silly so far. That was a win, right? I mean, he was still batting 160, but oh well. I mean, he's he's not young in the terms of age, but he's inexperienced, right? I mean, again, he's only reached double A. So the fact that he's doing this in the major leagues and not looking silly, I'll take it. You know, and even as as late yep. as this Thursday on NS9 Live, talking with Tyler, more or less said the same thing. You know, like it, it, he looks good, he looks comfortable, but the results have to come. And like in just three days, he's changed everything. And he was doing it beforehand. It's not as if it's just three days span that this has happened. It's just that it's still continued over the three days. And like, and here we still are. So you have to keep like there is no demoting Jack Swinski at this point in time or in the near future. I mean, he might be here to stay forever. Like this could be it for him. I'm not saying like this is like that's going to happen. I mean, he could still struggle, mm-hmm. of course. But he's gotten to the point where it's not just that he looks comfortable like you said. It's he's doing exactly what we said. Like the results have to come and they certainly are. You know, even with all the bad, he is now at a 102 way to run credit plus a half a war because his defense is tremendous. Uh, he looks the part, and now the numbers are supporting it. And he's been the hero. Like he's come up clutch. He's he's I, I'm I'm liking everything from Jack Sawinski so far. So yeah, long term, what's it gonna be? Still not sure. Let's keep evaluating, let's keep playing him and find out. But even myself, as much as you wanna I want to say the word hate because we've done that. We've hated on Marcano and it is just two home runs. Like it is a few games or whatever, but like even as much as you don't love Marcano so far, what you're seeing out of Sawinski, I'll swallow what I've said on the Adam Frazier trade. Like if Jack Swinski is the one that comes out of this to being Again, just a regular player. I'm not sure if he's going to be every day. I'm not sure if he's going to be a great, you know, a, a big time player or just a role player. But so far, what I'm seeing out of him, it's making me enjoy the Adam Frazier. And I'm, again, it's coming from me, Adam Frazier. Um, I'm enjoying the Frazier trade a little bit better. Now, it's an easier pill to swallow, see what Jack Swinsky is doing. Yeah, I think, the, I mean, the more and more you look at it, um, the trade the trade's not terrible. And honestly, I mean, when the trade happened, I think both of us even said, you know, I kind of this might like this trade better than the, than the Musgrove trade. Um, but when it come to, when it came to things gotten from San Diego, but um, as far as, as far as prospect return goes, I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah, the trade's not looking bad. <laughs> Trey's not looking bad. Um, yeah, I mean, if Sawinski comes out of it, it's just like a, a, a even a fourth outfielder. That's that's a win. Um, and Marcano, more and more when I see him, kind of similar situations, right? He's putting together good at bats. He doesn't like he he looks the part again. Like he doesn't look overwhelmed by any means. He's hitting the ball hard. He's playing great defense as well. Um, like, I mean, I, I, there were a few throws he's made from left field where I was very impressed by, uh, in that Dodgers series. Mm-hmm. And that's not even like his natural position, but he can play it very well. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing, seeing everybody more. Um, I, I like what I see out of Marcano and, and Swinsky. 
there you go. There you have it. Yeah. Done deal. No, I'll, I'm with you. So again, Jack Sawinski has certainly played hero. Cal Mitchell. So like he's kind of, I feel like at the situation where Sawinski was when he first called up, like Cal Mitchell hasn't looked lost. You know, he hasn't mm-hmm. looked silly. Um, the numbers don't support it yet. So but I guess we'll, we'll give him his time. <laughs> But uh, he's here. Like, there's no rush to get him down. Um, so again, like, I'll keep it at that. You know, he's he's looked comfortable. He's looked pretty well. Um, maybe more to be desired from the arm. But that just kind of is what yeah. it is. But hit uh, that bomb. Yes, hit the bomb yesterday. So yes, that was good. Yeah, you know, first major league homer. And, and again, like I think the big news and story, you know, as far as right now goes, is the fact that like Travis Swaggerty has been called up his timeline was he was getting the pnc park basically the start of the game so he didn't get his start yesterday so like we don't have anything to really discuss and talk about his debut i was hoping so that's why i was thinking this show would be fun we don't get to talk about swagger in that sense but he's here so i guess let's just talk about swaggerty in the sense of him being in pittsburgh and what that means you know and i put on twitter the other day it's again this is how i feel i wasn't a believer in swaggerty Um, with that injury, again, I had zero expectations. What he's doing in Indianapolis is blowing me away and he deserves the call. And I'm glad he is here. But if Travis Swaggerty can become based that prospect, he was right. Well, the reason he was drafted, right? This, this pretty, I'm not going to say uber athletic, but very athletic outfielder who pretty much can do a little bit of everything. Um, really, really good defense. If he can be an everyday player. What a bonus for this rebuild, especially again, this, this position, right? The outfield we talked about, which didn't have too many really good guys, a lot of names, right? A lot of depth we talked about, but no one that really stood out. So if he can become this player and I'm not saying he can be, and he will be, but what a huge bonus it is. Yeah. I mean, Swaggerty is an interesting prospect just because we really haven't gotten a chance to see him at all the last three years, essentially. Yeah. Um, he's very little playing time in double A AA or triple A, like almost none. Um, now, going into all of that, he never really like lit the world on fire, but he's one of those players that just kind of did everything good. Like he wasn't like great in any single aspect of his game, but he was just like good at a bunch of different things. It's a reason why, like there's a reason why top prospect lists had him in the top 100 for four years or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, It's because he, he looked the part of someone who could become an everyday outfielder in the major leagues. Like I said, the last three years, we really kind of haven't seen him play. So it's just been in more of an issue of it's not necessarily like it's Travis Swaggerty good. It's like, we just, he hasn't played baseball. So how can we really expect anything from him? Right. Right. And, uh, you know, you talked about it earlier, slow start in triple a, uh, but then really once the calendar hit may, He's been just killing the ball. Um, and, and again, I, I want to make sure everyone like yeah. realizes, recognizes it too, because yeah. the, the slow start. I mean, he's coming off mm-hmm. a shorter injury. I mean, basically the same situation yeah. Gregory Polanco was in. We knew how Polanco recovered from that. He didn't. Basically, he didn't. So I had zero expectations from Swagger. And again, like heading into this season, you probably could expect the slow start, not just because he was bad. But because of like physical reasons, his shoulder, and that's why he didn't get a whole lot. Like you didn't see him in spring either. So no, the slow start, he had, like I can't two at bats in spring training. Right, right. So like I want to also make sure people realize too. Like the slow start, you can't just attribute like all oh, this guy sucks and like oh he's just getting lucky. I mean he physically had issues and concerns. So now I, I the the shoulder like it's not a problem. I guess <laughs> easy to say. Yeah, um, seems seems to be doing just fine. Um, and, and yeah, like to, just to kind of like stress the point we were making earlier, going into today, 
going into this season, Travis Swaggerty had only played 12 games above high A ball in his entire minor league career, 12 games above high A ball. Um, you know, we talk about like how much playing time some of these guys get in the minors. Travis Swaggerty was drafted four years ago mm-hmm. and he's played 200, 220 games in four years. So it's just, he just hasn't been on the field. Um, and, and, and so I think that's just kind of where it's not necessarily that like we, we think he's bad. It's just, we, we haven't seen him. Like you, you going into this year, Travis Swaggerty had 41 at bats between 2021 and 2020. Like how can you even come up with a conclusion of like who this guy is off right. of that? Right. Um, so it was just, he, I think it's going into the season, just a complete unknown. Like you can't expect, like you said, you can't expect anything from him. But like, if he becomes the prospect that we all kind of hoped he was at one point, then that's just a major win. Um, and, and really, again, since the calendar hit in May, he's been mashing the ball. That's a well deserved promotion. Um, I am going to be interested to see kind of how the defensive aspect plays out because let's be real Travis Swaggerty is a much better defensive outfielder than Brian Reynolds. Um, Travis Swaggerty should be playing center field. Yes. Uh, over Brian Reynolds. From what I've been told, that's not going to be the case. Brian Reynolds is the center fielder on this team. Um, so who knows how long that'll, I mean, I, I, Travis Swaggerty is probably going to have to earn that. You know, he's going to have to earn it, right? If he, he's not going to be able to just get, he's not going to get handed this center field job. If he wants it, he's going to have to earn it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I want to see as much Travis Swaggerty as possible. Um, and, and again, if he can become an everyday outfielder, like we all thought he could, like we, this, this isn't something out of the realm of possibility that we never thought could happen with Travis Swaggerty. We all thought one day he could, he could become a major league outfielder. Yeah. Uh, it just, it just never seemed like the day was going to come. Well, now the day's here. And I want to see if he can do it because that would be a big win. Because again, we talked about outfield depth and, and how there's not really anybody. If Swaggerty can be one of those guys, that's that's good. Absolutely. And I, I want to touch on the what you just talked about with the defense because someone asked this as well yesterday. Kind of gave my two cents on it real quick, but I figured we talked about it. But but you're right. Like ideally, you want Swaggerty in center field. Like, I look at this, and it kind of reminds me of, like, the Kutch Marte aspect, right? Like, Kutch was here yep, first. Yep. Kutch is your star player. And right. albeit Reynolds isn't playing like a star player today, um, Reynolds is your star player. And, you know, Travis Swaggerty, like, who are you? <laughs> you know, you're not taking my – like, who are you, right? It's like when Marte came up, he goes in left field. Kutch stays at center. Um, it took a while, but over time they decided to make – the switch Kutch wasn't too happy about it. Do you maybe anticipate? And of course, I'm jumping the gun because Travis Swagger probably has to prove himself first, right? So, like, he would have to probably stay up here this whole year, have a fine season, and then like have some real discussion. But, like, do you see a scenario where maybe next year it happens that they have a baby discussion and Travis Swagger is your starting center fielder and Reynolds goes left? Because here's also a few differences I see Kutch came up as a center fielder. Like Reynolds was your left fielder. He became a center fielder by default because his team was terrible. And there was like literally no one who could play center field. Right. So it's not as if like this has been his position and like pride truly sets in. I also feel like Brian Reynolds is a bit more quieter than Kutch. And he's probably maybe a little more accepting to those type of things. Um, do you see a scenario where it's like they sit down next this offseason? You know what? I take that back. Clearly, Ben Charrington doesn't have these discussions offseason. Do you feel like two weeks in the spring training next year, um, Charrington will sit down with them and say, Reynolds, I want you to go to left field and, and Swaggery, I want you to be in center? It'll be op- opening day next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, opening actually. day. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think that's – I don't know. That's an interesting question to, to, to see here because, again, Swaggerty is definitely the superior fielder. Um, and, and like you mentioned, Reynolds came up as a left fielder. He didn't come up as a center fielder. Travis Swaggerty has yet to play 
a single minor league inning in any position other than center field. Like he's literally never played in another position except center field his entire career. Um, good question. I, I don't, I don't know how long, like, I mean, it's going to obviously swagger going to have to hit, right? So I mean, in order, in order to become the center fielder, he's going to have to hit a little bit. Um, but I could definitely see a situation where maybe not this year, but yeah, next year you kind of just go, Hey, Swaggery looks like he's here to stay. We feel like you're probably best suited in left field. He's best suited in center field to maximize both of your talents. Right. Um, I could definitely see that being something that plays out. And granted, of course, like, and that's also why I like with Marte was still an asset because we understand how large left field is, right? I mean, they even say basically like it's two center field. So like you have to have two solid defensive guys out there. Clearly, Swaggerty is the better one. It's not a knock on Reynolds. Like Reynolds is actually a good defender, not the best, but moving him center field. Like, so I want to discuss this too. I mean, we've seen this outfield defense so far, right? And like, just like amazing, like having Jake Marisnik, like what a huge difference have like an actual outfielder there when, you know, they started out with Cole Tucker was like your everyday right fielder. So like, we're getting into a part now where we've already praised Sawinski and how great his defense is. Reynolds is good. And now you're going to have Swaggerty. Like what night and day this outfield defense is going to be this upcoming week. Opposed yeah. to what it was opening day when it was just atrocious. Yeah, it's kind of incredible what happens when you play outfielders in the <laughs> outfield, you know? Right. Because, <laughs> I mean, they they basically went the entire first, what, six weeks of the season playing second baseman and out in the outfield. Like, yeah, it, the, yeah the defense is going to look bad if you're constantly playing people out of position, which they were doing. Um, so yeah, it's going to be refreshing. We've already seen the outfield get much, much better um, just when they play outfielders. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I'm uh, that should be fun. And even uh, depending either, or even if Spigerty starts off in left field, that that's going to be like, that, that PNC park left field is going to be, you know, a big, big, it's a big, it's a big area. So uh, that may even be more, more important center field honestly at pnc park so yeah it'll be fun to watch him run around out there make some plays hopefully he doesn't you know go too wild and get hurt again that'll be the last thing we want yeah um you know we've already seen one of our outfielders get hurt diving around that's Mar you know with marisnik mm -hmm. um gamble on the il now too so yeah that don't play too reckless because we don't want you to get hurt <laughs> again but do your thing come up and do your thing hopefully he looks just as comfortable as everybody else that has been called up so far this year uh and can can hit the ground running because again we weren't expecting swaggerty to really become anything at this point we couldn't just because of the lack of playing time and so if he can it's a major it's a major win for this development team and for the future it, it so. really is it really is uh, I'm just honestly, again, I'm so elated talking about this show this morning yeah. because you've said it time and time again, right? Like at least have this team be interesting. And I, you know, I said, it, it does make sense. And I still stand by it. Like, I mean, interesting is okay, but if it's still a bad product, like I'm not still not that interested. Like you can give me all the different faces or whatever, but if the team's still bad, it, it still is whatever. Like I need the team to be at least somewhat competitive. Right. And all that's happening. Like they're this team is finally getting interesting. I know Josh Fan Meter's on the aisle right now. I kind of hope this is like the end of them. We'll find out. He'll find some way to stick. But regardless, even if it's not Josh Van Meter, like you're seeing more of the old heads that really aren't major leaguers starting to in some form or fashion get purged or like dropping down right on the depth chart. The younger guys are coming up, the younger guys are performing. So, like, at least at this point, too, they have to stay. You know, like, you're not just going to start sending these guys back down because, well, Yu Chang's on the roster or, you know, Van Meter's coming back. Or, honestly, like, now with Gamble, I'm not saying, like, I'm not saying to trade him. He's a veteran. 
he stays on this roster at least for now until the deadline comes. But like he comes back and he adds to this mix now. Like you got to find a way to get his bat in there and stuff. But like like you're seeing some really interesting players and they're performing. And again, so far, yeah. I'm 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 loving. I can't wait to tune in to watch a pirate game anymore now. Complete 180 yeah. from like two weeks ago. Not even two weeks ago. Seven days ago. Uh, that's a good point. I mean, there's people on the team that you want to watch. You know, uh, like if let's just pretend like we're setting the lineup for today <clears throat> and you go Swaggerty, Swinsky, Reynolds is your outfield, right? And then you've got Marcano at second base. You've got Castillo at short, Hayes at third, Davis at first. Vogie at DH and Heineman at catcher, who's all of a sudden, you know, become, you know, a speedster. Yeah. <laughs> in, in, infield bunt singles all of a sudden, but he's still um, Marte behind the plate. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> but uh, like you get that, like that lineup is, that's a fun lineup. Like that is something that interests me. Like I, I would want to watch the majority of that lineup. Um, yeah, and, and the starting pitching, again, we haven't gotten into that yet, but starting pitching has been excellent um, this past week or so. Like, they've been Since really May. good. Yeah, they've, they've been good. Um, Zach Thompson has all of a sudden looks looks like a competent starting pitcher. Drew Baker has looked good. You know, still giving up home runs, but for the most part, it's looking good. Um. And then Rossi has the course Rossi. amazing. I mean, yes. just he he's come up here and he looks like when I was telling when we were telling people he's the best pitcher in this organization, he's clearly showing it. Like it's not even it's not even up to for debate at all. It's like when he when he's out there with the ball, he's the best player on the field. So think about since like 2020. Like every pitcher has come up, right? And, and we're basically debating, like, can this guy stick? Can this, can this, can this? Yes, Ronzi is such a fresh breath of fresh air. It's like, mm-hmm. like what we're seeing out of him. You, I think you mentioned before, like, when's the last time that this organization has really had like a big time pitching prospect come up, you know, and perform in such to that degree? And like, I, Joe, I think it's been like maybe since Tyone. Um, it's just so nice to see a pitcher go out there and just dominate that you're not like wondering if this guy is a starting pitcher or not or what he can do. Yeah. Like he just goes out there and you're just blown away. Like, Oh, that's right. This is what a starting pitcher can do and looks like. And, and, but you're right. Like he has certainly played the part. Um, I know he came up at the beginning of the year. He looked comfortable. He looked good in that, in that pseudo like two, three inning role he had, right? Like kind of what Will Crow and, uh, Dylan Peters was doing right. Ronzi was in that. Now he's actually starting and he looks even better. He looks even better. You know, we joked, uh, well, not joked, but we talked about like his first two starts, his stuff wasn't really there, but he pitched, you know, and he got through it and he looked good. And his stuff was there yesterday, Jim. It was there and it looked so good. Yeah, no, he was dominating hitters uh, all day Saturday. Eight strikeouts and five and two thirds innings. Yeah, I said yesterday. My bad, Saturday. The um, <laughs> the, the one run that he did give up was unearned uh, because it, it just, there wasn't good defense behind him. Really, I felt like that whole game, but especially that inning. He um he just dominated that Arizona lineup. Uh, no one could could no one could hit him. Um, I think it's just one of those deals where, and, and actually just kind of, okay, he gave up two earned runs. I was thinking he hadn't given up an earned run yet as a starter, but he did give up two against the Padres. Hmm. But but again, it's just like you're watching him, and even when he didn't have his stuff, you're like, okay, this guy's good because he's getting batters out, and he doesn't even look like his best self. He looked really good on Saturday and was basically untouchable. Yes. Um, you just love to see it. Uh, really, really excited about his future. I don't know how much we'll be able to see him this year. He's at six. He's at 46 innings, I think, so far for the season. Um, 40, 43 innings so far for the season. 
he threw, I think, 75 all of last year. So you got to think his cutoff's probably like at 100, 110, somewhere in that area. So I don't know how many more starts that we'll get to see him, but perish every start. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully they'll figure something out and they can like extend them through the entire season. Like maybe have them go every six days or something like that. Um, maybe they'll end up going to a six man rotation. I don't know what they're going to do, but uh, yeah, so far so good. Yeah, absolutely. Again, we talked about the young bucks. Ronzi fits that mold. He's just dominating. But again, like I don't want to get I don't want to leave out the other guys because they absolutely have. And, and again, it's it's us going back on like what we've been saying. I mean, I don't know still who to credit. Is it Oscar Marine? Is it some random pitchers like, you know what, guys, let's just start doing this stuff. But like they've changed a lot of them change up like the repertoire and, and whatever. And even like yesterday, Zach Thompson was cutter, two seamer, curveball, and then sprinkle in the four seamer here and there. You know, like they're throwing the sinker a lot more. And Zach Thompson has looked r- really good. Like that's not an overstatement. He actually has looked really good. I'm not talking confident. I'm not talking like, oh, he's been okay. He actually has looked really good um, since May. JT Brubaker has. Now, of course, he did have that start. His last one, like you mentioned, he gave some home runs. He wasn't great. But like, I'm not looking at that as saying, oh, yeah, JT Brubaker stinks. Like, okay, since he's kind of changed up, what he's been doing, that's one bad start in it. So I, I'm still intrigued by him. Um, Mitch Keller, yes, is a work in progress right now. I'm back on trying to see what he is because, as we all know, he started throwing the two-seamer his last start. So what's he going to turn into? We'll find out. Um, but, yeah, like even the other pitchers, yeah. <clears throat> I'm intrigued with I want to watch. It's not like Ronesy or Bust anymore. It's, all right, let's 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 see what the other guys have. And, of course, Q, right? Quintana has just had a really, really good season so far. Yeah, I just looked to see where they were at. Since the start of May, 10th <clears throat> best starting rotation in baseball. Uh, like on. This is the Pittsburgh Pirates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like they're – they're pitching pretty well. 3.82 earned run average since May 1st. Uh, and yeah, a lot of that has to do with, with Thompson and Brubaker both had huge Mays. A lot of that has to do with Roancy coming up here and just dominating. And, and then you mentioned Keller. I, I wasn't on Thursday, so I didn't get to talk about it, but he looked different with that sinker. Like, that's all it took. I think that's not, I don't know if that's all it's going to take. Like if that's all it takes, it's like, why did it take us this long to figure this out? You know, but he looked good. Like the other stuff played off of it. Well, um, he, he didn't have like the best command. Obviously he walked five batters in his five innings of work. So like he's going to have to get better at that, but. But I'm perfectly okay with that. His very first time doing this. Sure. Okay, fine. Yeah, like he's gonna have to he's gonna have to figure out how to command better. I mean, really, that's all of his pitches. He's gonna have to command better. But as soon as I started seeing that sinker, like it was the first inning, it was just like, oh my. Well, I I, I didn't even notice it until Alex Stumpf was like, uh, "Baseball savant says he's throwing a sinker. I don't know if this is right or if it's broken." <laughs> and then the next pitch, I'm like, oh, "That was a sinker!" <laughs> like he just threw a sinker. Um, I, I was like, I've never seen him throw a sinker before. And then, you know, you start paying attention. It's just like, oh my God, he's throwing sinkers. Uh, and it was like, he threw a lot of them. It wasn't that he was just like sprinkling them in. Like he was going heavy sinker. And then he was playing off of that and it was working. So it's like, did we finally figure out, did we, did we figure out Ms. Keller? Like, did we fix him? I don't know. That would be that would be just absolutely amazing if we did. So I can't wait for more Miss Keller starts to see how that sinker plays. And here we are, back again. Here we are. Like it's it's back, the, back and sucked in again with the right. Miss Keller. Stuff. The the yeah. Polanco syndrome, right? I mean, it just yeah. it just is what it is, and it's it's warranted. You know, and again, like my biggest thing has always been like if there's something different getting the results. Then sucker me in, and and here it is. And again, like Mitch Keller seems like he's doing something different every every month, and that's why he suckers you in. But all right, well, it's something different, and it intrigues me. And like you said, it wasn't bad; like it wasn't terrible. 
It's his first time throwing it in a game. So, right, like give him some starts. Let him, <clears throat> excuse me, let him maybe get comfortable with it or whatever. But it didn't look terrible. And maybe this is what works. And maybe this is what makes him a good, competent pitcher. And maybe this is what keeps him in Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh can like bear the fruits of his labor and not some other team who's like, hey, why didn't you just throw the sinker? <laughs> what were those dumb dumbs doing with you? Like, we've been watching you for five years. We said, oh, if he just throws a zinger, it'll be fine. <laughs> so, like, maybe Imagine. Pittsburgh can, like, get this production and not some other team. Imagine if the Pirates were just like, all right, you know what? We we got to move on from you. We're trading you to the Astros. And then what happens is he goes to the Astros. He starts throwing sinkers and he starts dominating. Like, that would, be, that would have been the most frustrating thing in the entire world. Um, and especially because, like, think about that nuance, right? This is the organization that was just so just it's sinker, 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 right? Like, it's nothing else, right? They're so headstrong on that. And it was the sinker that fixed him. <laughs> God, that would have been incredibly frustrating. Right. It actually is kind of surprising that, like, they didn't have Keller throwing sinkers his whole time in the minors because, like I said, it was kind of an organizational philosophy. He was here during that yeah. regime. So, uh, yeah, just now finally learning to throw sinkers, and it's he looks like a different guy. So we'll see. Yep. So hop on, hop on the train once again. Let's see what Pop Mitch Keller can on. do again. I, I yeah. feel like this really is almost like a make or break it type of year for him. Uh, he's got to yeah. figure it out. And if this is what it's going to be like, this is like this last ditch effort to finally cave in and throwing it and it works. I mean, whatever it takes to work, that's all that matters. But um, again, like I, I really, yeah. I'm super intrigued. Like where all this is coming from. I really want to know, is this really an Oscar Marine thing? Because again, like maybe we don't have to go into details about that, right? Taps and whatever. But Oscar Marine's certainly on the hot, like hot seat too. You know, we've talked about him, and like I, I'm ready to move on from him. You know, what have we seen from any of the pitching, any type of improvements? Nothing, right? And then all of a sudden, we're seeing pitchers throw more sinkers, and there's some results. And it's like, is this Oscar Marine? doing is this some pitcher who's like hey guys let's try doing this and they're doing it i don't know where it's coming from also is it just oscar marines realizing like the rings on the wall like i'm out of here so let's just here's my last ditch effort let's just start throwing the two seamer more i don't know i'm really interested though to find out like where this is coming from because i feel like this is the first time we've seen like some fundamental change in in the pitching well, I think um, – let me see if I can find it. Similar change happened, too, with uh, Zach Thompson. So mm -hmm. so you, you, you kind of see, like, what's changing. Like, what's – is there a reason for these, pit, for these pitchers to do better? Um, Zach Thompson's now throwing 10% more cutters than he did in April. Yeah. Right? So it was like once May hit, he starts throwing his cutter a lot more than he used to. Uh, he basically ditched. Like he was throwing his forcing fastball quite a bit. He he doesn't throw it often anymore at all. He saw I felt like yesterday he threw it more much. than he's normally has as well too. Yeah, but he's also been was an real. Offense. Yeah, he's basically basically been pretty heavy cutter sinker um, since the start of May. And he's just like, he's going to that off-speed punch stuff every once in a while. He's throwing basically 20% off-speed pitches since since May started. Um, so like he's found the pitches that are working for him. He's not throwing the pitches that aren't working for him. And it's Imagine. caused a difference <laughs> it's there. <how> simple. So. <laughs> but like, that's what's bothered me. Like, this was the yeah. stuff that yeah. was just so frustrating with the last regime. Mm -hmm. And now, granted... I'm not a big believer in Zach Thompson. So I can just simply feel like he's just not that good. But you saw this stuff in the pictures, mm -hmm. like especially Joe Musgrove. And it's like, why are you doing this? And mm -hmm. so like now here we are, you know, and like, again, like JT Brubaker, the same thing. Like I feel like him and Thompson were basically this, the same, the same timing. 
him and Thompson started throwing the sinker more, pretty much eliminated like the four seamer. And then now insert Mitch Keller back of the rotation after like his two skips, right? And he comes back with the sinker. So I'm just at, again, why and who? That's all I really want to know. Because if this is yeah. Oscar Marine, does this change an outlook for you going forward? Or is it still move on from Oscar Marine? Or if this is Oscar Marine, is it, you know what? He didn't have a whole lot to work with. They were trying many different things. And now here we are. And I'm comfortable with him because look what he's doing with the staff now. Or is yeah, it just I mean, still if it's too something early? where. I don't know. <clears throat> Yeah, it's too early to like. I think come up to a conclusion. I wasn't happy with what Oscar Marine was doing, obviously, up until this year. Uh, like, like you mentioned, we haven't really seen development from pitchers once they hit the major league level. We're not really seeing that, right? Um, but like, if he if he was the one who went to Thompson and said, "Hey, we need to throw your cutter more," and if he went to Brubaker and said, "Hey, Brubaker, we need to throw way less sliders than you're throwing right now." Like, I mean, those are, those are things that, you know, he, he observed, he saw, he watched, he gave feedback on, and then they made a change based off of it. So, I mean, that's the whole point of being a coach, right? Is, is seeing what's working, seeing what's not working and making, making your stuff work. Uh, and we've seen really, like I said, once, once may hit a few pitchers have changed the way they're actually going out there and attacking hitters. And uh, it seems to be working. Yeah. So if that's a, if that's a change that's that's from Oscar Marine, then good for Oscar Marine. He deserves some kudos for that. I don't okay. know if it is. <laughs> if, I, if it is, yeah, that's it's, I, kind of where my at. one thing is is that we're seeing like changes of behavior from multiple pitchers, like all at the same time. Like almost like he was like, "All right, I'll give you all April," and then he was like, "Okay, now we're gonna go in here and we're gonna." we're going to fix some things. So who, who knows how it worked or what happened, but I mean, you could clearly see that like once may happened, you saw repertoires change. You saw people throwing pitches more or throwing pitches less kind of once, once that month turned to may. Yes. So we talked about this fun lineup so far. We talked about the pitching, which isn't, it's not quite fun and young, right? I mean, but there's differences, and now it's it's good. I mean, again, like starting in May, like 10th best, it, that's good. I'm not saying it's great, but it hasn't been bad. Like, it has been good. That's not a lie. It's been good since May. Um, We already know, like, David Bednar is elite, and there's some holes in the, in the bullpen, but, again, Stratton's looking pretty decent. Dwayne Underwood's back and he's held down the fort, you know, like this bullpen isn't terrible. I'm not out here trying to say playoff pirates by any means, but like, have we finally reached a spot where this can be a pretty competitive team and interesting and fun to watch like the rest of the year. It's not just misery to turn on the pirates team to see Hayes and then Reynolds struggle. And then that's it. And then nothing from the pitching. I mean, I, are, are we kind of here? Is this still under 500, but a competitive team fits for Pirates? It's a tough question to ask. Because, like, the run differential still isn't where you'd want to see it. Here's the deal that they haven't really been blown out, though, like recently. You know, <laughs> it's been I, a I solid feel like month. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but, like, for real, I mean, it's, right. I guess it was that. It was eh, actually, it's been like two weeks. That Cardinals series, they lost that game 18 to four. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Pitched. So we're, we're going through now. We're at two weeks without getting blown out, right? Tell me you're a Which Pirates fan nice. without telling me you're a Pirates fan. Yeah. Two weeks without hey, getting guys, blown out. Guys, it's been two weeks since we've been blown out. Yeah. Um, and like I said, they've been, it was like basically all NL West teams, which, is not a bad division. Uh, I'm pretty certain that, I mean, Arizona's ahead of Pirates in the standings. Padres, Dodgers clearly are. I don't think the Rockies are. Let me double check that, though. Uh, um, 
they're like right this they're the same so I mean, they, they held their own again in, in that little trip against the nl west i don't know if we're seeing a team just kind of get better and meshing as the season goes on i mean i still what, what did i predict this season like 70 wins 71 wins something okay, like that kind of all like around the 70 72 you know, yeah so like i mean if you look at where they're heading right now right what's four 462 is their win percentage 75 times 162 75 win pace so they're outpacing what i would have expected a little bit um i i think you're at least dealing with a team that like you can't put in with like the worst teams in the league right like this team's better than the royals they're better than the than the reds oh the reds have been stepping up a little bit lately um you know they're they're better than the A's. They're better than a lot of these teams that are just like, they're still in like complete tank mode. Mm-hmm. I think we expected the Pirates to kind of be with, with those, especially after like that first month of the year where they just weren't doing anything well. I still think the, the offense is going to be its main struggle, right? Like even if the pitching is can, can maintain what it's been the last month, which – I don't know if it can, but if it can, you're still having an issue where the offense isn't scoring very many runs. Right. It's the, you know, it's the third worst offense in baseball right now uh, when it comes to just runs scored. That really hasn't changed. <laughs> so we've seen some pitching get better. The offense still is not is not clicking. Now, if Brian Reynolds all of a sudden figures it out, then this offense looks completely different. When's his wife do? <laughs> but I mean that that plays Circle a big part. Arcade. Like that plays a big part. If Brian Reynolds can can figure it out and start hitting like he's capable, then the offense at least looks maybe not wretched. Like right now, it's it's awful. Even when you when you brought up like I brought up a box score yesterday and compared it to the Diamondbacks. You know the Diamondbacks lineup has like seven people in it with slugging percentages over four hundred, and the Pirates had one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. When you're comparing lineups just to any other team out there, uh, it doesn't look good for the Pirates. So that's going to be the one thing where if they want to continue to flirt with 500, they're going to have to start hitting the ball because they really they really aren't still. Like the games that they're winning, it's because of good pitching. They they gotta they gotta hit the ball a little bit more if they want to keep up this pace yep and so again kind of going back on the young bucks they had to take five out of six to get to this point to first even talk Mm -hmm. so they're not going to keep up that pace obviously right so and there's going to be some struggles you know with the offense like jess winsky has had a fantastic week but like i'm not expecting this week to just be what jack swinsky is right so there's going to be some struggles i mean there's a lot of young bucks on the team now so they're going to go through their bumps but I mean, let's also just quickly, right? But just also mention, like, and this is a team without O'Neill Cruz yet. So, like, and once O'Neill Cruz comes up, th- th- this is a. I mean, again, this offense isn't isn't bad I anymore. Need it. <laughs> oh, I inject it, <laughs> right? I need it. Uh, the offense is still bad. <laughs> the well, offense is still I, bad. I would disagree. Um, the offense if, wasn't bad this past week. If O'Neill Cruz comes started. up and he does what we think you're doing, I mean, you have Hayes, there is Reynolds, like Vogelbach has been a fine DH, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's O'Neill Cruz. I mean, we're talking about like the, the the top five, and that's all we're asking for right now because it's been like a top one and then the rest. So like the top yeah. five could essentially be a formidable offense. After that, it's just whatever you can get, but. I'll take that. I need, I need and to Chavis too. Confirm. I know we didn't talk too much about I, Chavis today, but that's true. Chavis is hitting the ball when he's given the opportunity. He's, he's coming through and that, that's been all year for Chavis. Like that wasn't, right. that wasn't even just like a May thing. It's he's, he's been doing really well all year. Um, I need to get Ethan to give me the, the estimated super two date this year on, 
on a cruise. I think it's somewhere around the 15th or the 16th. I think at this point where we're at, like, obviously it's, I want him up today, but the pirates, if you've gone this far, the pirates aren't calling him up before that super two deadline. I, I fear, I fear, like, and this is just personal and I know it's a little cynical, but I'm sorry, but I also fear Nathan Hirsch mentioned this on Twitter and I told him, and that's literally, I'm saying this, there's a lot of times I say things in jest on Twitter because it's Twitter, just have some fun, right? Let's be sarcastic, whatever. But I kind of fear he might even be longer. And the whole fear of that is just simply because you held him down to manipulate service time. No one in the NL is running away with rookie of the year. I mean, you can you can argue Mackenzie Gore right now. Of course, he's a pitcher, and that could change. His peripherals don't really align with what his ERA and stuff is. So you could maybe see that going backwards. Like Nolan Gorman just got called up. He's having a fantastic start so far. But, I mean, it's just right now. Like Suzuki has tamed down a bit. No one's running away. And if they called him up June 15th, and he comes up hitting, and even though it's June fifteenth on, it's a shortened time. Like he still has a shot today. I feel like getting rookie of the year or top two. And why the hell wait till now to come up if you're going to lose the entire year of service time anyways? So like you know what? Maybe he still just needs to work on things a few more weeks. I honestly, again, like I truly fear that's going to be the case, and it's less to do with him and the actual Super Two date. And the more to do with just how the NL Rookie of the Year race is aligning today. There's, if you're going to lose a whole year of service time and not getting a draft pick, that goes against your whole reason of holding him down. So you're going to just keep holding him down to make sure that doesn't happen. Well, that would suck. <laughs> it would, and that's I'm, I, I think it was June 28th. That's the the Brewers. Four game series. I'm like, circle that. It's a home stand. It's four games. Kutch comes back. O'Neill comes back. That brings a buzz. It's four games, and you're hedging your bets a little more. That's my date. <laughs> it's. Awesome. I hope you're wrong. I hope you're wrong. <laughs> I do too. Um, hopefully, the date is tomorrow, right? Um, but. Yeah, I have a feeling it's going to be like maybe that June 17th series against the, the Giants. That's that that I could see. Okay. Well, anyways. Yeah. All right. So does that pretty much wrap up the show for this morning? I think it does. So I guess we can talk a little bit about the news. So... Officially, as of this morning, North Shore 9, Pittsburgh Baseball Now. It's a thing. Officially. 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 We, we can talk about it, Jim. Officially. Yeah. So, okay. so what does that mean, too? So I guess what it means for people to know, too. I know we've done a little bit of, and people have come out, especially because the Pirates are winning. I know people have come at us about like doing the, the Twitter spaces. And I know we just haven't because of whatever, but so officially we'll be doing a post game show um, after the Pirates game live, just like this. So um, check yeah, us out. Should be fun. I'm excited. Yeah, fun. Pittsburgh we'll baseball stay. now, North Shore nine. Let's do it. Yeah, no, looking forward to it. Should be a good partnership. Like we, we will, we'll, we'll still do everything that we're doing right now, but now on top of this, We'll do uh yeah, quick little post game shows. Might be might be two of us, might be might be one of us, but whatever it is, kind of yeah, late uh after after uh, after game show. So everybody's been clamoring about our post game shows not being there on spaces. You'll have something. You'll have something after after this soon. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I'm glad you used up all your vacation. So you're done now, Jim. Oh, I actually I have to go out of town again next week, like all <laughs> week. So, <laughs> oh my God, you're fired for multiple reasons. You're fired because of that and because of our Gabby yeah. Sanchez talk. I'm over right. you. <laughs> the Gabby Sanchez thing. 
that's another conversation for another day that we will have. Yeah, yeah. I promise. Because I'm not done. But all right. So let's get out of here. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. See you guys.